Hello, I am Victor Paredes. I am the product manager of Mojo, and I want to show you how to use delayed constraints. So first, uh, we have this tentacle here again, and I can animate this tentacle by rotating the bones. So I can go to any frame, and I can just rotate this, and you can see I can animate the tentacle. But now, if I move it, you can see it is actually being animated, but the movement is a bit stiff, okay, because everything is happening at the same time. So normally what we do in these cases is that you add some extra keyframes, for instance, to add some delay to the movement. So you can do that. So then things start to happen a bit later, maybe here. And then maybe at this point, this bone is going to, this bone is going to be pointing here and then at the end it's going to be something like this so basically when you move a tentacle this is not great but you can see that now things are not happening at the same time and i, I could continue doing some stuff here like add, adding some de delay to the to the actual animation but what i want to show you actually is that we have new delayed constraints now and let me just remove the animation here and I will start by selecting this bone. So this is the main bone. It's called B1 because that is automatic name the first bone, first bone you create uh, has. I can change it. So it will be called I don't know main tentacle bone. All right, bone. I need to fix that. There. Okay. So this is the name of this bone. So now I can select the second bone here, and I can go to bone con constraints so I just use the select bone tool I selected the bone and then I opened this little window here bone constraints and here you have the control bones options all right and here we have angle position and scale and I will use angle this in this case so I will just tell the software okay I want the bone that is selected which is this one to follow the main tentacle bone uh, and to follow I mean to copy its movement at 100% and with zero frames of delay. So now if I close, close this, what will happen is that if I rotate this bone, this other bone is also going to rotate. So if I rotate this bone in 90 degrees, this bone is also rotating in 90 degrees. You can see there. So this is happening with the control bones. All right. So now I can only, I, I only move one bone and the other bone is actually following that. Now. Let me just go back and select this bone again with the select bone tool and I will open the constraints again and I will set a delay here. So the bone is going to move at 100% following the same movement that the main tentacle bone has, but maybe it will be four frames later. Okay. So now what happens is that if I move the main bone, the second bone is going to move, but a bit later. So you can see, it is still moving four frames after the other one. And I can select this and maybe I can say uh, not four. I want to them to be 10 frames later. So now the movement is, is going to happen way later. So it's still move, moving in the same way this bone is moving, but 10, sec 10 frames later. All right. And I can also change that. So maybe it can be 10 frames later, but then instead of being 100%, it is going to be 120%. So now it is going to move more than the original bone. Now you can see it is rotating more than if, if this bone is rotating, uh, I don't know, 90 degrees, this one is going to rotate. I don't know how much, but more than 90 degrees um, and 120% of 90 degrees. All right. So, and I, if I continue working, moving this to the other side, you can see how the delay is behaving. So you can get something a bit more natural happening here because things are not happening at the same time. So let me just move this bone a little bit lower and then a bit higher. So now it will have some cushion there. Uh, and I can do the same with the next bone. So let's say I will select this bone, but actually I want this bone to follow the previous one, to follow this one. So what I'm going to do is to select the previous one to know the name. It is called B2. Okay, I will keep this name for now. So I will just select this bone now. 
and I will go to the control bones and I will select angle, I will select B2 and I will tell it, okay, this bone is going to follow B2 at 120% with uh, 10 frames of delay also, all right? So now I'm starting to make a chain of movement. So I only animated the first bone, but now indirectly the first bone is moving the second and the third bone at 120% uh, percent of the movement. Maybe 120 is too much. I will set 110 for both. And maybe not 10 frames. I will set uh, 4 frames instead. Okay. So now you can see the movement is looking a bit better. So I could continue doing this with the entire chain uh, of the tentacle, but actually we have a script to make this easier. So if you have a chain of bones and you want the chain to follow the, the first bone of the chain, just select all the bones on that chain, but don't select the first one. And now you can go, sorry, let me select this again. Now you can go to scripts, bone, delayed constraints. So now you will have this little window here and in this window you can set if you want the delay to follow the rotation, the translation or the scale. In this case we are going to use the rotation. What percentage do we want? So it can be 110 percent and the frame delay let's let's keep it on four frames there. So now if it if I hit OK the software automatically will apply that delay to the entire tentacle. So now if I move this bone, you can see everything is following that. So now, just by moving this bone up, everything is reacting to that. So you can get a nice fluid movement there. And you can increase or decrease the percentage of movement. You, I can select these bones again if I am not happy with this. I can run the script again and maybe I want, again, I want 120% just to see how it goes. So yeah, I think that looks better, at least for me. All right. So yeah, you have the delayed constraints working there. And this can work also with position. So let me just remove all this. And I will select the, these bones again, so all the bones but not the main one. I will go to scripts, delay constraints, and I will set the scale. And let's say I want the same, sorry, the translation. Um, so I will keep 120 and 4 frames later. So now if I move this bone, the other bones are going to move a bit later. This is a bit more crazy, I think. But there you have it. So they are moving at 100 and 20% of the movement. So yeah, some weird things are going to happen here, but you can see uh, they be are working. It's kind of weird. Yeah, it's kind of weird, but what it is doing is actually logic. And I can combine because I already applied angle for this. So I can still animate the angle on top of that. So now it's changing the position and the angle. So it's doing weird stuff. But yeah, now you have like a proper monster moving here. Um, let me just remove all this. You can apply also, apply it to the scale. Um, so I can select this again, go to scripts, delay constraints, scale, and I will keep the same. So now if I scale the first one, the second one, it's going to scale later and the other later and later. So you get that. So I can just control the scaling there. So it's a weird, but uh, it can be a cool effect, I think. And of course, you can combine that with the rotation. So now the bones are rotating and scaling with a delayed constraint. And you can change the position too if you want totally to totally break this. I can just change the entire position here. Yeah, this is exactly how a tentacle moves. You see? 
Um, but anyway, that is the delay constraints. If you want to disable all this, you can just select the bones, go to the bone constraints and select none for angle, none for position and none for scale. All right. Now, one last thing I want to show you, and actually for this, I'm going to create a, a simpler file. Um, a very simple file. And I will just create two bones and I will set the second bone to follow the first one. So it will follow the, let's say it will follow the angle, the position and the scale also. But for the delay, I am going to set negative frames. So it is going to follow the, 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 the first bone, but six frames before the first bone moves. So I will just set negative six here. So now what is going to happen is that when I move this up and I check the animation, this other bone is already higher because it moved before the other bone. So, and the same for the angle, if I rotate this, now this bone is already rotating because it is moving before the other one. So it is a weird sens sensation because the bones are like kind of predicting the future. <laughs> they are moving before you are actually moving them, but it can be a nice effect too. Um, maybe you, if you are animating something like wind on the grass or stuff like that, you can apply this. Or if you are, if you are animating a machine that, that needs to move in, in some way, um, so some of the movement needs to happen before uh, you press something or whatever, you can apply this. But yeah, it, it, it's a weird sensation. Now, something that can happen uh, is that during the first frames of the animation, the bones are adapting to the no new movement. So probably there will be some, some jumping at the first frames of the animation, right? In this case, I don't think we are seeing any. Uh, no, it's moving very, very smoothly, but it can happen that sometimes the bones are adapting. Let me just go back to the tentacle and maybe I can show you here. So I will just set again the delay constraints for the rotation. So now let me try. I will try to break this. So if I rotate this and this. No, sorry, it's actually lo looking nice. Or let me see. Yeah, it's nice. Okay, I wanted to break the sofa, but <laughs> I'm not able. But anyway, if you see anything weird happening during the first frames, uh, this is because the bones, they need to adapt to these delayed constraints. So in order to fix that, we have two options. You can make your animation to start a bit later. So sometimes I, I prefer to start my animation instead of on frame zero. I prefer to make it a start on frame 24. So to do that, I can just hold alt on the keyboard and click on the 24 number. So now you can see the animation is starting there. And if I want to change the end, I can hold alt and right click over any number. So now this is how I define my animation will go for frame 24 to frame 96. Or you can go to the project settings and set here the start frame will be 24 and the end frame will be 96. So I can change that. Maybe the first frame is going to be 18 and the last one is going to be 102. So I can also do it there. So it's the same thing that pressing Alt and clicking here, uh, but you have those two options. So this is one option. Just start your animation a bit later so you, you won't render whatever is happening here. And the other option is to use the sequencer and move your layer to be move your layer to the past. So those weird keyframes are going to happen in the past, not in the future. So now everything will be moving fine here. Now I personally don't like to use the sequencer too much because that means if I move the past, that means that I won't have access to the keyframes that were in the past. So I will have to move the sequencer back. If I want to edit the animation, I will have to move it back, edit the animation and then send the layer back again. So it can be kind of clumsy, I think, but you can do that also, especially if you have your animation already done and you don't want to edit anything else, you can use the sequencer for that. But that's it. Um, oh, one last thing about uh, delayed constraints. I will just create some blocks here okay i'm sorry for the ugly example here but i just wanted to show you that 
you can also apply um, delay constraint. I'm going to make these bones to follow B1. So the scale of B1 at 100%, but maybe five frames later. And this one is going to follow B1, but 10 frames later. Okay, so now I get this, so I, I can scale everything here. So now you, you get that. Okay, which is kind of nice, but you can also select all these bones and select the squatch and stretch for the scale. So now these parts are going to be squatch and scaling too. So that can be a nice effect. In the case of the tentacle, I could do something similar. Let me just put this back here. Um, but now I'm going to remove the Kerber in this case. So what I'm going to do is to set uh, the delay constraints for the scale. Okay, and now I will set squatch and stretch for the bones. So now if I scale this, everything is going to scale down. And if I scale it up, everything is going to scale up, but keeping the squatch and stretch. Now the squatch and stretch is very strong here, so maybe we'll reduce it. Instead of 100%, it's going to be, I don't know, 58%. Oh, no. Yeah, it's a bit better, but uh, maybe this is not the best example, but you can see how the squatch and stretch works. Okay, also I, I removed the Kerber here, so everything is not looking so smoothly. Um, it's not moving so smoothly, so... Anyway, that is <laughs> the lay constraints. Um, ah, one last thing. Uh, my, let me just search for this file. Um, you can create some kind of crazy machines with this. Um, let me just show you this one. This one, this machine is actually moving and the only bone that I animated is this one, this fit here that is selected. Everything else is moving with the light constraints and some dynamics there. Um, so you can also do that, like create some crazy robots with this if you really want. I can create a tutorial for this. this is an old technique created by another person. I don't remember the name um, now, but it is a cool technique to create machines. And now with delay constraints, you, you can make legs to move a bit later and follow the main leg there. So yeah, this is the kind of stuff you can do with delay constraints. All right, thank you very much for watching. Bye.